Today we're going to bring you part one of a four-part series on investment behavior and mass psychology in the markets. Usually when markets are going up, I get to be a portfolio manager, but when the markets go down, I have to turn myself into a psychotherapist. Because one of the biggest issues that many investors have is that they have a very difficult time leaving their emotions at the door when investing. So hopefully some of these uh, traits of mass psychology can help you avoid the mistakes that many are making today. Time and time again, we see that when the herd finally jumps aboard a trend, that trend has very nearly run its course. A false sense of security in numbers causes us to follow the herd. Being reactive is not the answer. Here's a chart of the Canadian dollar going back over the last year. We can see the peak reached in December did not stay there very long before it started to come down from $1.10 to $0.98. Cents. This is where investors should not react to the trends and put all of their money into the Canadian dollar and that they may, must remember to diversify because by following that trend can hurt them in the long run. The next emotional decision that we make a mistake on is we tend to hold on to our dogs too long. It's very common to hear the comment, I'm just waiting until my funds get back to where they were and then I'm going to get out. This is a very common perspective. Even though you may have a portfolio that is not aligned with your values, it is very difficult to sell out when you're going to lock in losses. Here's a chart of Nortel going all the way back to the peak of the bubble of technology in 2000 at $120 a share now being valued in the pennies. And even along the way there were rallies back that caused people to feel that they could dollar cost average and own more of the shares only to find it go down further. The basic premise instead of holding on to our dogs is to ask ourselves if we don't want to own a stock why do we still own it? That should give you the reason to sell. Third point is we always prefer stocks that are in the news because we have quick access to them and therefore can believe the story one way or another. This is not a good reason to buy a stock. Research has been done by two finance professors at the University of California. They found that as long as there are attention-grabbing events of any kind, whether positive or negative, investors are more likely to buy these stocks than sell them. The moral of this story is buy stocks that nobody's ever heard of and that no analysts cover, not ones that are always in the news. As you can tell by this chart of research in motion, it's very difficult to decide when to buy it and when to sell it because the stock is moving every day based on whatever the recent news is. Don't let that cause you to make a mistake. So that concludes part one of this four-part series. Part two will continue on with four more rules and lessons that you should learn before you make investments in the market to keep your emotions away and at the door.